Okay, perfect. I think we're all here now. All right, welcome everybody. Um, so we've got Donovan with us again today and one new uh, panelist here with us, Jose. Um, so as always, we'll, we'll do a round of introductions just uh, so, so they knew, know who everybody is in the room. Um, and we're getting really good at passing it around at lightning speed. So uh, first on my screen is, is Sophie. Can you start us off? Hi everyone and welcome Jose and welcome back Donovan. I'm Sophie McGinley. I'm an assistant planner with community planning and design and I'm public engagement lead for the middle housing project. And I'll pass it over to Ken. Uh, Ken Beeson on planning commission. I'll pass it to Carolyn. Hi, I'm Carolyn Jacobs. I'm a representative for the Neighborhood Leaders Council. Um, I'll pass it to Jennifer. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ye. I'm a city councilor for Ward 4, and uh, I pre-apologize for having to have my camera off. I have a bad internet connection here, so sorry about that. And I will pass it to who hasn't gone? Uh, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Fraga, and I serve on the City of Eugene Planning Commission, and I'll pass it to Ed. Welcome to attendees, Ed McMahon. I'm the Executive Director of the Home Builders Association, and let's go to Heather. Hello, I'm Heather Salicki. I'm with the Human Rights Commission and would like to wish you all a happy International Human Rights Day. Yeah. Oh, and I'll pass, sorry, I'll pass it to Karin. Hi everybody, I'm Karin Knutson. I'm an architect and urban designer and the founding director of Better Housing Together, which is a housing advocacy organization based here in Lane County. And I teach uh, in architecture and planning at the U of O. And let's see, uh, looking through our list. Ken, have you gone? Then Lynn, I'm gonna pass it over. I have. <laughs> Oh, Terry. I'll oh, pass to Terry. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Terry Harding. I'm the principal planner for community planning and design with the city of Eugene and the city's project manager for House Bill 2001 implementation. Lynn. Hey, Lynn Davis, uh, program manager for Healthy Democracy and lead designer for this project, um, or this portion of the project. And who hasn't gone yet? Or am I the last one? Not Donovan. Donovan, thanks. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Donovan. Um, I'm one of the panelists and I'm on the uh, uh, process committee. Uh, pass it off to Jose. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, great to meet all of you. And I'm also one of the panelists and on the process committee as well. Great. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be here in our final meeting of uh, 2020 with you all. And uh, we just have some housekeeping things to go over here. First of all, um, upcoming dates, timeline, as you all probably already have realized, the panel's last session was on Saturday. And um, despite a, a small uh, technical challenge there at the very end, where um, Lynn and team is working very hard this week to um, finish out the voting on the panel's final principles uh, through a Google form and um, will very soon be, be published um, and to city staff. So we're excited to be wrapping up the process and I wanted to pass it over to Lynn to talk a little bit about next steps and timeline moving forward. Thanks, yes, absolutely. In fact, as uh, we were doing those introductions, I was just inputting the final numbers into the, or not, I shouldn't say final, um, what we're going to say is the preliminary numbers into the into the report for this section of the project. We're still, um, I've been sort of waiting till the last minute here, and then um, we'll get you a preliminary report or everyone a preliminary report, but then we'll leave it open for a few days just because we want to make sure that everybody that wanted to vote on the last few principles that got cut off on Saturday gets a chance to, though, so, important to count all the votes for anybody that wants to get a vote in, um, and hopefully a Publishing the preliminary report will will jog folks um, memories and, and get the last few votes in. So that's great. Um, but uh, yeah, so 
Uh, what's coming up next is the publishing of that final report or final report for this section um, that'll go to city staff and, and to the public. Um, and then there will be a presentation on Monday to planning commission where this project gets, I think, some, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 minutes, where I'll be talking a little bit about what's happened so far. And then two panelists from the outreach group on the panel um, will be there to say a few words about their experience um, and then also take questions about their experience. Um, they won't be speaking on behalf of the panel with regard to the content. The, the uh, principals speak for themselves but um, they'll be there to, to you know, add any, answer any questions about experience. And likewise, I, I'll be there to answer questions about the process for the planning commission. And then uh, maybe I'll pass it to Terry to just talk about the sort of next things that are happening in, in January and coming up after that. Sure, well, uh, we have a second planning commission meeting scheduled for January 12th, where we'll do some technical follow-up and dive into some of the work that's coming out. Um, we actually got rules adopted by the state yesterday. So they're not actually published, but um, the LCDC, the Land Conservation Development Commission did vote right before noon um, unanimously to approve the final rules for large cities for middle housing implementation. So we're waiting to get that notice from the state and we'll be working with our consultants on the next steps. Um, but we do have the January 12th Planning Commission meeting on the calendar and a January 25th with the City Council. And then we'll go, be going into another round with Healthy Democracy in February and the other panels and groups as well. Yeah, that's right. So in mid-February, we'll be headed back into sort of two and a half sessions in, uh, in that round, a Tuesday, Thursday, and Tuesday um, to review the first draft concepts coming back from, from the city. And, and then in mid-April, the panel will reconvene again to, uh, for another two and a half sessions to, to look at the next draft of, of um, code concepts. Um, There'll be actual code at that point. So we've got co right. code concepts in February and then draft code language in April. Yep. And there will be steering committee meetings. Um, I believe that was in your email, Alex, wasn't it? Yeah, steering committee meetings before and after each of those sort of rounds of sessions in the spring. Yeah, great. Thanks, Lynn and Terry. Um, yeah, so I, I sent uh, in my email to everybody yesterday, just all of the 2021 dates in case you wanna put the panel sessions on your calendar. Um, and steering committee dates are hopefully pretty easy to keep track of. It's just every first Thursday at the same time uh, from February to May. So I hope that works for you all. If there are any major scheduling difficulties, feel free to, uh, to let me know about those. But I think we'll, we'll stick with those four Thursdays. Um, and our, our task will, will at that point really be to um, just kind of approve the you know, high level process design for that, that first three or the, that first section of three meetings, um, you know, debrief process, approve debrief um, along the way, like we've been doing. Um, so any questions about next steps timeline before we move on? Okay, great. Um, Let's see here. So promoting the panel, um, one of the charges of the steering committee is to help promote the panel's work. And I think Lynn and I were talking, you know, in our work so far, we've been so in the weeds and you all have had so much to do in terms of getting experts in front of the panel um, and kind of overseeing the process that there's been a little bit less emphasis on this, but I think Lynn wanted to share a little bit about how, how that could happen at this point now that the, the first kind of work product has been created. Yeah, so this is, you may remember, is sort of a, an aspect of the, the, the idea behind having a, a steering committee or um, advisory board or, or whatever these are called when, when we do them with a, with a project like this, um, that um, the, the panel has its own sort of committee for talking about what it's done. Um, but we want to uh, give you all who have been involved in the project now since the beginning or since, since 
farther, <laughs> not the beginning, but you know, before the panel started, um, additional, you know, sort of tools. And if you, in case you want to, you know, talk about the panel as well. Um, and, and, and this is not talking about the results of the panel. None of us um, are, are qualified to speak to the, the, um, the principles or any of the other future results that come out of the panel, but simply to talk about the process, what's, what's, uh, you know, what's different or unique or how this fits in. Um, and this is, a, this is certainly not a requirement, of course, but we just want to, uh, we know that sometimes folks want resources to, to sort of talk about these things and they can be kind of new. Uh, you know, there, it's a new kind of uh, process. So we wanna make that available. Of course, there's the website. Um, and I just wanna point out a few of the things right now uh, and we'll follow up with these. Um, but there's, there's the website, um, there's a video series that I'm not sure we've talked about very much that we're putting together. Um, it's going to be, I think, a seven part video series, um, sort of outlining different aspects, digging fairly into the weeds on different aspects of the process. The first one is with, um, is with Sophie and, uh, and Jennifer, actually, I'm talking about sort of from the city's perspective, why, why this happened and and you know what's 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 unique about it um and then digging into the, the the selection process with a couple of folks uh working on the selection software um the the in-room process with alex and i talking for a good 40 minutes i think on <laughs> more details than anyone ever wants to know about the in-room process uh <laughs> and then um oversight of the process um, and so that's gonna, I think now include somebody from this, somebody else from this committee and also a member of the process oversight group on the panel and also an evaluator. Uh, there's this group of eval evaluators who's been following the process. We haven't talked about them very much, but there's about, I wanna say eight or 10 of them um, who will be meeting um, to give some interim feedback over the break here. And then we'll be writing their own reports, however they envision that after the process is over. Um, and and then the other episodes, um, uh, I'm blanking on at the moment, but there's a couple more uh, after that on, on other aspects of the process. So um, uh, yeah, so that's coming up and it's posted, it is linked to from the project page. I'll double check that. And it's definitely on our YouTube page, um, but uh, we'll provide these kind of resources uh, to you as well, in case you have an opportunity or interest in talking about what's happened here. So, um, and also just a reminder that there are members of the panel um, themselves who are in the weeds more than any of us um, in terms of what's actually happened. Um, there's this process oversight group, members of whom are here today and um, and have been over the last few meetings. And then also an outreach group that's working on sort of a series of what they decided they wanted to do um, a, a series of short testimonials from, from folks on the panel. So that'll be coming out at some point. They will be working with our marketing person to edit those sort of over his shoulder um, and then producing uh, a little video or two uh, that will be coming out in the next couple of months, I believe. Um, Alex, anything I'm missing? Yeah, I think just an offer to appear at events and meetings as well, you were gonna mention. Right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, so we're, as you know, a nonprofit uh, uh, and, and we're an educational and advocacy nonprofit at our core, even though we're, we also do the projects. Um, sometimes, sometimes advise on them, sometimes actually do them as in this case, and are very happy to, to speak to anybody anytime group, small or large. Um, so get in touch with us if you'd like us to show up with anything. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Any any questions about promotion? I, I will help Lynn to compile materials and, and send a, a really clear email to you with links and all of, all of those things. Uh, go ahead, Ed. I think you're on mute. Yeah, my mouse pad wasn't working right. Sorry about that. Um, I'd just like to have a little more information about the evaluators. That's new to me. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we should have. Uh, 
I, I may have not gave, given them a great introduction early on, um, but they, they can also appear before this committee and, and, and um, arguably should. Um, uh, it, maybe in the next meeting, I, I might suggest that um, if that's of interest to folks. So they're a group of, of, uh, of folks that we um, recruited from our sort of peer organizations, mostly overseas. There's one of the researchers is an academic here from the States um, who has evaluated a few of our projects among others um, previously, but most of them have never seen one of our projects. And there's not a ton of sort of um, observation between organizations in this field yet. It's a fairly new field. And, uh, and we really wanted to get that started. Uh, we usually have evaluators that are, that are academics and, and, and um, all of our processes have been evaluated by somebody. And in the past, it's always been academics led by a team at, at Penn State University and, um, and, and Colorado State University, John Gastel and Katie Knobloch. But, but they weren't available and their team wasn't available for this. So we thought, oh, perfect opportunity to go out and see if other folks in the field are interested in doing some level of peer review. So these are folks from Canada, Australia, the UK, Spain, um, the US, as I mentioned, and maybe somewhere, uh, Germany, or maybe somewhere else that I'm forgetting, um, uh, uh, who have been sitting in in the small groups um, and, and of course in the large groups and then will be, uh, yeah, evaluating sort of the deliberative quality for the most part of the, of the panel and the operation of it by us and you know for fairness and and also um for sort of yeah uh deliberative quality how, how well folks are talking to each other how things are how things are operating um because there's lots of little things that happen in the process i mean as you know the small group sessions are not open to the public um and and so we there needs to be sort of other layers of oversight Great. Any other questions? All right, perfect. Okay, so we wanted to spend most of today, uh, the next 40 minutes, um, doing a pretty thorough debrief of, of the steering committee's work. Um, and so I, I've kind of categorized this into two main sections. Um, one kind of about the process of selecting background experts and creating the menu of experts for the pan panel. Um, and then the second category of just kind of, you know, how well the steering committee functioned uh, overall. Um, I'll just say that this is, and, and Lynn maybe can speak to this a little bit more, but this is the first time in a healthy democracy project that there has been a steering committee. So it's kind of an exciting new component for us. and. Um, one that certainly needs will need tweaks and improvements <laughs> for next time. And so this is really valuable information, not only to kind of improve upon how we're doing things for our next four meetings in the in the new year, but also um, rich information that that Lynn can can take to, to future projects as well to make sure this this goes really smoothly. Um, so, and, and I should say that I'm kind of thinking about it in these two main categories, but I'm sure, I'm sure it'll not be that neatly divided. Um, so we can do, um, feel, free, feel free to direct the debrief in whatever way feels, feels useful and important. Okay, so Lynn is gonna be our scribe for this section. So I'm gonna ask uh, Lynn to share a screen so we can take some notes in real time here. Excellent. Okay, so starting off with the um, presenter selection. So this can be both kind of the very beginning stages of choosing background experts or creating the panel or the menu. Um, what are some things that worked well about that process? And I, I think that unless, um, well, yeah, actually let's let's use stack with with the raised hand feature. I'll be able to monitor that. All right, go for it, Karin. I was just looking at the list of the experts who went before the panel, and I would say 
um, as an outcome that the range of perspectives that the panel heard from was you know, quite broad and a lot of expertise and relevant background information shared through those presentations. Great, thank you. And everybody's familiar with the, the raised hand feature, correct? You see, maybe, maybe not Ken. Yeah, sorry, when you went to full screen, I'm having a little trouble finding it on mine, but okay. if you don't mind, I could just raise my hand. Yeah, I can, I can just change my screen around so that I can actually still see everybody's face. Um, so I can, I can monitor both actually now if I do it that way. Um, so did you have something to add, Ken? I have a couple of things under, oh, mind. Yeah, I have a couple of things under changes. So I'll just hold till then. Okay. Um, or we can move back and forth. Um, yeah, why do, we, can, we can do both at once. That's fine too. Go ahead. Okay, uh, let me throw, I'll throw them out very quickly here. One is on, and I think we were calling them the categories uh, that were developed. As we were doing that, what occurred to me, what I personally think would have been better would be for uh, you guys from Healthy Democracy and also the city staff to prepare a draft list of potential categories in advance and share that with us all so that we could react to that and add to it, edit it, and so on. I thought it seemed a little less efficient to have, it felt to me like what we were doing over a couple of meetings was generating that more organically, which was good, but kind of from scratch. So not really a critique, but just a comment for consideration. My second, my second one I'll just throw out is I, um, I understand you, you really have to limit the time on this and you can't have people doing this forever. And I, I really get that there is a tension or a balance required there. Given that, I, uh, I was also uh, struck by, uh, I thought the presenters were pretty much across the board, pretty high quality and uh, interesting, informative, uh, really knew a lot. And on almost all of them, I, I kind of wanted more or some more opportunity to hear from them. So however that might be, I don't know about others, but however that might be tweaked, um, there, were, there were several of them where it felt to me like a little more than 10 minutes would have had quite a bit of benefit, <clears throat> even for just a couple of minutes. So that's what I've got. Thank you, Ken. I see Lisa's hand. Thanks, Alex. Um, so I would say as a positive, um, I appreciated the fact that the steering committee selected a number of um, presenters, but that the um, panel had the opportunity to also choose presenters from a menu. I thought that was a balanced approach. Um, and then in terms of a change um, in the process for selecting panelists, I, I do feel like there was a lack of time for us. And uh, I guess maybe too quick of a turnaround time sometimes. And so um, I believe Lynn communicated to me that only six of us were able to weigh in on some of the final, some of the final selections that we made when we were voting. Um, and so I'm not sure how that could be best be tackled, but some ideas might be, um, I think there's been content shared in our steering committee meetings that um, could have been given to us in a document or prior. Um, and not spent so much time discussing it, which would have allowed more time for deliberation in this meeting. Um, and 
having a longer turnaround time to give input on some of those documents seemed really important to me. Thanks, Lisa. And I'll also just say briefly that um, Jose and Donovan, even though you weren't involved in this process, if you have comments that you think are, you know, would be relevant to um, this process and, and the products of the steering committee, um, please feel free to, to weigh in. Okay. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Jose. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you articulated that. I didn't, wasn't sure how to um, provide feedback here. Um, to Ken's point, um, I, I think having a list prior would have been helpful so that then you could articulate more why they were being considered. When us as panelists got the list, there was a um, unbalanced uh, amount of information on some panelists, um, which can be interpreted as biased information being provided, meaning some people uh, get more information because we want them to, to present for real, or you know we put more weight, so we're gonna put more info. Whether that was intentional or not, it can be read that way. Um, also, um, um, oh, there was something else in that, um, but I, I, it, it slipped my mind. The other thing I would say is, and I don't know where this came from, but there's a, an emphasis on uh, being objective um, or unbiased. I believe the, the word used was unbiased. And that term really struck me as a panelist as odd. Um, how can you not choose a position on this bill? The fact that you are presenting information reveals some insight into you. Um, and so by setting up this uh, unreasonable rule or expectation, I think it created a false narrative that some people are more biased than others that was pick, picked up by later panelists. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's not that no one is biased, it's that everyone is biased. It's just that maybe when we provide instructions, we wanna uh, uh, support them giving information and not necessarily advocating only for their point of view. Uh, and that to me is a difference than just asking everyone to present in an unbiased manner, which I think is, is pretty much impossible. Um, and then uh, last, the uh, other thing, um, uh, I'll stop there for now. I'll stop there for now. Thanks, Jose. And we can circle back to you for your, your final point. Uh, Lynn, how are you doing with getting all of this down? <laughs> oh, you know, uh, always, <laughs> always a challenge. Let me just get the last bit of, of post. If, I, if I don't get something, please, please, uh, please, uh, you know, let me know. I think I've gotten the point so far. Uh, if you need us to slow down, just let me know. I've got everybody's faces big, so I can't see the document very well anymore. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, jump back in, Jose. Sorry, I, I remember the other thing I was gonna say. Um, it was shared with the panelists that when um, speakers were contacted to present, that very little information was presented to them as to what they should speak about which I think is an odd thing. Uh, if I'm asked to speak to something, I wanna know a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, not referring them to the website and asking them to figure it out, but saying whether the steering committee or the panelists have chosen you to come and present on this because this committee is charged with that and, re and providing them on that, um, I think would be good across the board as opposed to uh, having the presenters figure it out themselves in whatever way, shape, or form they do. Thanks, Jose. Okay, others, not seeing any hands raised um, physically or, or virtual hands. <laughs> so anyone feel free to step in. Oh, I see a Karen and then Donovan and then Carolyn. Probably picking up on something that I think Lisa mentioned earlier, but that for the steering committee and, you know, the next time that you do this may not have the same circumstances as our, you know, current distanced and remote lives, but it may. And uh, the timelines 
for work that you want the steering committee to do and really give, you know, sort of full attention and a lot of robust feedback to you on, you know, those need to be days, not hours, because everyone is dealing with life um, beyond the, just this responsibility. And I think that, that everything that Jose just mentioned um, and with more time for deliberation in our meetings is information that, you know, we probably could have, could have gotten into with um, just a little bit more time facilitated around that content. So for the next time, you know, I would, I would put like a, you know, minimum amount of time attached to anything that you're asking for directive feedback on. And I know it needs to be flexible, but it's good to have goals. Great, thanks. Um, and Heather, I've added you to the stack and uh, Donovan, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, um, making all of the processes, all of the steps, making everything um, more visible, uh, making them accessible. Uh, you know, I don't think, I mean, I know a lot of this stuff gets published later on, but um, making everything accessible uh, as, as quickly as possible or as soon as possible uh, is, is important. Okay. Was there a specific kind of type of information you're referring to there, Donovan? So uh, as a panelist, you know, we, we heard about the, the existence of the steering committee, but it wasn't until I was here that I knew who was on the steering committee. Um, and then uh, I found out last week, you know, these meetings are recorded and they're being put on the Eugene City website. Uh, but they're not also being shared, you know, as a panelist, I'm going to the panelist resources for everything. So there's some information in one place and some information in another place. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to piece together the whole picture of, of what's going on. You know, what are we trying to accomplish? Who's, who's involved? Thanks for, thanks for clarifying that, that's helpful. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's such value in having both perspectives sitting on the steering committee, thank you. Um, okay, uh, Carolyn, next. Oh, you're on mute, Carolyn. <laughs> okay, um, I just wanna start by saying people have made some very good comments, very useful things. Most many of which I could have made, would have made too. Um, just to go a little further into the lack of preparation time, I think I said this many meetings ago, I think the steering committee should have been meeting at least a month before the panel started, if not more, just so we have plenty of time to go through what we had to do and to give us time to find out things about the people that we were, um, choosing to offer to the panelists. So a lot more time. And of course, sending us documents would have been great. We didn't need to sit through the first three meetings. We almost didn't have any conversation at all. We just sat and listened to a lot of process stuff. Um, but yes, a lot more time. And then also I'm wondering if we couldn't have done more work or provided more than just a list of names for the panel. I mean given the truth that all of us, as well as anybody we name, all have certain biases, it would have been useful, I think, if we could have, assuming we had the names or much, much or generated names much earlier, we could have, as a group, sort of discussed who was there and maybe been able to suggest, well, these two would have been good the first week or the first meeting or these, three would be best at this point. And let's make sure we don't leave out a whole section for the end. But we never did anything with the names that we generated, right? I mean, there was no discussion, there was no back and forth, there was no, hey, let's look at these as a pair or let's look at these as something to say for the end or so, just anything. We, we did nothing other than just generate names, but I think we could have provided some more useful information to panelists when they then got to review those names and choose from them. 
more kind of deliberative time in meetings. Yeah. Well, it just seems like our job was sort of minimal, right? I mean, all we did was pick panels. We could have done, I mean, uh, not panels, sorry, uh, speakers. We could have done that totally just by email. We could have sent our names in. Um, I don't know who ended up, I think maybe Terry or whatever, because she got to place things in categories, but you know, we never really chose them. We generated them and it was a quick thing and we were done really. That was just the heart of what we did. Um, I don't know what went on behind the scenes, but that seemingly was what we did. We never discussed, well, those two are similar. Let's do this, let's do that. And just for the amount of time that we committed to this, it seems like we could have been more productive. It seems like there's a, a question I just want to remind myself of in the next section then about kind of balancing time spent on the various steering committee roles and, and uh, missions. Um, let's go to Heather. I, pr I appreciate everything that's been said so far. Um, I have felt uh, very much that uh, we're not really steering anything. You're, it feels a lot like we're just coming to meetings and you're telling us the rules, but we're not really engaging in any sort of meaningful way. Uh, as far as this review panel, I remember one of you saying, well, you know, we're just going to have to call and whoever whoever answers the phone, basically, whoever, whoever says they can meet with us in this short of a notice, like a week or something, that's who's going to be the one talking. And it didn't feel like healthy democracy in any sort of way. It just kind of felt like we're just rushing this process along and then, and then spending so much time talking about process when we could have really been making this a more meaningful experience, both for ourselves and probably for the panelists, if we understood our roles or were given actual roles to be able to, um, to talk out about this very uh, complicated and nuanced subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are there any other examples of kind of changes that you might recommend making to, to rectify some of those things, Heather? Well, I think what's been said so far, providing us with a, a, a list of like, hey, we're going to ask you these names tomorrow, you know, in advance so that we just weren't put on the spot. And then even if we'd have known that the following week we were going to be addressing that again and we could have had opportunities to change it, um, we just weren't given that information. And then as after these review panels, we were, giving, we, we were expected to watch all of them ourselves um, and it, it, we weren't provided with any sort of summary or information. And it just, it just felt very um, uninvolved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Karin. Just a reminder for folks to lower their hands after they've spoken so I can track that. And, the, and Donovan, you're, you were not in front of me in the queue. Was your hand still up from earlier? Oh, sorry, I forgot to lower okay. it. Just checking. Um, uh, so I think what Heather just mentioned was a great point that actually one of the most challenging aspects of this process, which was not uh, clear to me at the outset, was that we were going to need to watch all of those hours of the panels meetings in order to actually understand what was happening and what the dynamic was in the panel. And I think, um, so two, two points with that. One, it's a huge additional time burden that was not clear about this process. And I would bet you that has not been sort of equally addressed across the steering committee. I'm guessing that many of us have not had the time to watch all of those panel meetings. Um, and maybe some of us have, and that of course creates a really uh, skewed dynamic when we're discussing things. Um, certainly I'll say at our last meeting, we spent I think 45 of our 60 minutes talking about something that occurred at the panel that had I seen the panel conversation previous, I would have thought, um, you know, something actually very similar to what Lisa mentioned, like, well, that was just an exchange, someone trying to gather information and understand who this person presenting to them is. And you know, it, it flared up because of the personalities involved, but I don't think 45 minutes of this steering committee's time on that was well spent after I saw the panel discussion. Um, so I, I think that um, for the other piece to that would be, you know, it would be a huge help, especially when we have, you know, Jose and Donovan with us or other members of the panel with us in our meetings 
to, you know, be able to use, you know, this time to really understand like, how is the panel feeling about the information they have access to? You know, what are the big questions that are coming out of these smaller group discussions so that we're getting a cycle of feedback on the information that they've been presented? Because then, you know, we could offer you all feedback like, oh, well, if they say they're looking for more of this or this or this, maybe look to these resources um, and just, you know, be able to have a sense of what is, is happening. So I think for future um, processes, there needs to be a summary from a you know, short summary from every panel that comes back to the steering committee that shows us like who was presenting, what the primary issues and, and like areas of discussion were, if there were any questions back to the steering committee based on that specific panel. Because that was one of the other things that I found confusing. There were a few times when we were asked questions during this process that came from the panel. And I always found myself wondering, similar to last week, well, what, what was the circumstance preceding this question? Like, why did this, why did this question come up at this time? Um, and th I think that context is really important, you know, when we're doing this work. So more, more cycles of input back to this group for, I think, would, for more effective steering. It's coming. I just want to make note of the time. We've got about 15, 17 minutes left. And so it's, it feels like we're already beginning to make transitions into, you know, thinking about bigger picture, how overall the steering committee process could be improved um, or work, what worked well about it. Um, so kind of beyond presenter selection, feel free to open up comments um, to really anything at this point. Uh, Lisa. you. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to um, it, acknowledge something or um, put out there as an opportunity for growth that, uh, let me think about how to put this. So, you know, the thing that made me really excited about the healthy democracy approach was the, the context of, um, I'm gonna use the word depoliticizing. I, I mean, you know, obviously there's, a, there's no um, lack of bias. I really appreciated what um, Jose said, right? Everybody's going to bring their bias to the, this discussion. Um, but it's not, it's, it's a little bit more insulated, the panel's a little more insulated than like the city council is where, you know, there, there's all this lobbying um, that happens or advocating that happens in the direction of a governance body. And we're all aware of the fact that the people who have the strongest impact are most often the well-resourced, um, have the most privilege or in, of position and resource in our society. And um, that was something that really attracted me to this process, right? And um, a positive that I have noticed in um, the panelists that have visited the steering committee is that um, there seems to be good representation of black, indigenous and people of color of BIPOC members of our community. And um, I feel that that is a very strong positive. Sitting on the, on the city of Eugene steering committee, attending city council meetings. Um, I'm an elected representative to the LCC Lane Community College Board of Education. It's the same voices. It's the same people. It's the same privileged and resourced constituents that have access to this decision-making. And so it seems like the, the, it's, there's been this positive that there's been a broader, diverser group of voices being represented. So that's a positive. That being said, that does then require within the context of these conversations that there is an awareness of the positionality of certain members who have white privilege and how they interact. 
And there have been times when I observed um, clear dynamics of white privilege in some of the conversations. And I think that the people who are participating may need to have a certain awareness or cultural competency. But I also think that um, that puts a certain responsibility on facilitation. And, and that is a hard um, role to occupy as a facilitator. And so it, it is going to, I think, be a dynamic that as we continue to adopt this process that we should be prepared to think about and engage with. And that I hope we would be prepared to think about and be receptive to struggle with. Thanks, Lisa. And I'll, I'll just put this out there that if anybody has, you know, feedback on more specific instances where you think, you know, something could have been facilitated differently or, or done differently that you'd like to share with me privately, I'm very, very open to hearing, hearing that feedback by email. Um, if you don't feel comfortable sharing, sharing specifics in this room with everybody. Um, all right, I think we have Jose and then Ed in the queue. Lisa, I want to thank you for uh, voicing what you just did in the way that you just did. Um, this is my first time appearing at this um, steering committee. And coming from the panel committee, it is starking how undi superficially undiverse this group is. Uh, and, and to think that this group is charged with steering a much more highly diverse group that is trying to be, as you put, Lisa, depoliticized, protected from those political pressures. Um, it 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 uh, baffles me as to why this group is is not more diverse. Um, I, I think that I was one of the panelists who asked for the demographic information of this of this steering committee because I was unclear who was on here and 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 you know for a variety of reasons, it's like, huh, who, what, what's their thought process? Who, who are they? Um, are they representative of our representation? Um, and to what degree does that matter? And so I think that um, that would be something that I would pay close attention to in future iterations. Um, and then I think um, Donovan talked about this also, uh, learning that there is us as panelists who are engaged in this process. There's the steering committee who's trying to steer with us. There's the planning commission and then the city council. And the higher you go up in power, the less diverse it becomes. And we're at the bottom, we're at the bottom. The most highly diverse group is at the bottom. Uh, and, and yet there is this funneling uh, and to what degree is the funneling going to slice away at the recommendations of the most highly diverse group in this whole process? Thanks, Jose. Uh, give me just a second here. Okay. Catch up. Absolutely. And Jose, just a quick reminder to lower your hand, if you would. Thank you. If I didn't get that quite right, Jose, uh, let me know. Okay. So we've got Ed and then Karin. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I think you've gotten some real good feedback today. And uh, I guess where I'm at with all of this is I need to be a little more patient. I think I'm trying to get to the finish line before we're ready, because where I'm thinking about all of this is it all started with HB 2001, and there are timelines on that. In fact, the state approved it this week. And I'm, I'm, I'm questioning the flexibility or the effort or, or the accomplishments that we can have with this bill. And I, that's what I'm looking for. And I think I just need to be patient. It might come out a little further in the process. Um, 
And with Lisa and Jose, I really appreciate your comments. And I'm realizing that maybe there's more that I need to learn because I believe this process is bringing more diversity to city items than what I've seen in 23 years of being involved in it. And um, I understand, yeah, that, that diversity is at the bottom right now, but before that diversity didn't exist at all. And so I'm very encouraged about having this process to bring more diversity in. And it's the beginning and it's gonna take some time to get it there. But uh, gosh, I, I wouldn't mind being educated a little bit more. Um, what Lisa, when, when you said the right the white privilege part has come out, uh, I'm, real, I'm, I'm not seeing that. So I need to be educated. And I guess that's it for now. Thanks, Ed. Um, and we've got Karen and Sophie in the queue. And I, I just real quick, I want to throw it out there since we have eight or so minutes left. Um, feel free to keep sharing whatever you were already going to share. And I'm particularly curious if there are recommendations, suggestions for changes um, that you know Lynn and I can make before our spring meetings, um, kind of specifically about how to how to make those the best best use of all of your time. So let's go to Karen next. That was one of the two points that I was just going to um, request Alex is if we could put a, a pin next to what Jose just articulated, because I think back when we were first, I mean it's several meetings ago, but we were looking at the process charts and the sort of flow of information from these different groups into the decision-making process. And one of the things that, um, I, I mentioned something about this and sort of clarifying the, um, the diagram, but I think actually the issue is maybe the work of this committee to address like, how can we actually close some of that distance or become, um, clear support structure to the work of the panel moving forward without being, you know, eaten away at by um, other perspectives that are used to being the, you know, the only voice in the room. And that seems like it could be, you know, an aspirational outcome from, from this committee's work in terms of what we're doing to support the, the process and the time that the deliberative panel is, is putting into all of this. So I would, I would really like for us to spend some time thinking about that and, re and like really sort of digging into what we can do in order to help uh, not have the concern that Jose articulated be true because that you know, is a familiar pattern, I think, in our, in our community. And I had Sophie next, but Terry, do you have a quick response to that? Or you just want to get in the queue? Okay, so we'll go Sophie and then Terry. Yeah, thank you everybody for sharing. Um, as we rethink the composition of the steering committee, I also think it's important to rethink staff's role on the steering committee. Um, this process, the whole healthy democracy process is new um, in that no, staff doesn't have contact with the panelists. We're not running the process. Um, the only contact I have is, you know, when I watch the large group sessions and when I send out Zoom invitations. And because we're supposed to be um, so neutral, it's been hard to find my place on the steering committee and, and uh, figure out what input I can give. Um, so I think perhaps in the future have staff be administrative, administrative support and liaisons. Um, or whatever works best, but really figure out what is staff's role. Um, are we here to observe? Are we here to share? Um, you know, what are we doing? Sophie, Terry. Thank you, Sophie. You articulated one of the points I was going to make, so thank you for that. And then I just wanna echo the thanks to the panel for bringing up all of your feedback. It will be useful to our future phases of work in House Bill 2001, but also to the city organization as a whole. We, as you know, I'm sure, have struggled to get diverse feedback and we've struggled with equity and inclusion for general public processes and in representation on our boards and commissions. And those are longstanding goals of the city. So this is super helpful to hear all of your um, detailed feedback. Thank you. Great. Lisa. 
Um, and oh, am I, I'm probably, oh no, I'm not muted. Okay. Um, so I just was having, um, like I had a thought after listening to both um, Jose and Karen and Ed. And I, I think when I think about this process, I think about the panel as being at the top or maybe at the center. And sometimes words have power and it might be a good idea to rename this group. We're not steering, we're here to support or to do some type of work that is sustaining or nurturing the work of the panel. And so words, I do believe words have power and I see the panel itself as being at the center or at the top. And um, I think we could think about the way the steering committee operates, um, even in what we identify ourselves as in relationship to the panel. that. All right, I'm not seeing any more hands. This is the last call for debriefing at this stage. Yeah, Karin. I just want to be sure we capture this into the notes that um, at least from my perspective, uh, taking the time to try to learn about what we can do better next time is not meant to impugn or, you know, implode the process that we have been through. And these, you know, comments to help the next work that we're going to do be more effective are not at all meant to uh, say that the that the work that's been done to date is somehow not up to par or you know isn't worth having having done. So I just wanted to be sure to say that because you know we can sometimes get caught in a critique cycle of process being imperfect and therefore it's not valuable in any way and. I, I appreciate this opportunity to improve it as we're still within it. So thank you. Thanks, Karin. Okay. You know, there are a couple of folks we haven't heard from or have heard very little from. So with a, a special invitation to those people to throw in a last word here, anything, anything we don't have captured in the notes. Okay. Sorry, I've been so quiet with my internet. I worry that you, it's going to go out. Um, I just want to appreciate what everyone has had to say. It's really valuable. And as, as Karen said, hopefully this will not be the last time we do this. And this kind of feedback is going to be invaluable when we do it again. My, the, one of the things I did like that I, I don't know that it's been mentioned is having the panelists on this, on this group. I think that was a really smart decision and they have been invaluable multiple times with bringing information that I don't think we would have considered um, or we would have maybe uh, overlooked. Um, so that should definitely be a, a continued uh, element of, of if this is done again. Great, thank you, Jennifer. All right, well, I want to express uh, my gratitude to all of you for that really rich feedback and for um, a couple months of hectic but productive meetings. <laughs> and um, really looking forward to, to making good on some of these uh, suggestions and, and improving um, how we do our work together in the spring. So any, any final words, Lynn, or, or anybody else? Before nope, we... you said what I was going to say. Thank you so much, everyone, for your candid feedback and and um, and and also up, uh, appreciations. Oh, that's very nice at the end, uh, but really appreciate folks for sort of speaking out on on things that they didn't feel were were good. That is the only way that it will get better. Uh, so yeah, and thank you for for doing this with us. As as Alex mentioned, this is the first time that we've done this. Not the first time that we've done any kind of. Uh, oversight committee, steering committee, advisory board, whatever, um, by any means, but with this amount of involvement or theoretical involvement, at least, Heather, uh, acknowledge that um, th this this is the first and um, and really appreciate you us sort of working with that and, and providing all this feedback to make it hopefully many times better the next time around. So um, thank you. Great. 
Thank you, everybody, and look out for an email from me in February um, about that first meeting date. All right, have a lovely winter break, and feel free to be in touch by email about anything. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Merry Thanks Christmas. Much, Happy everybody. New Year. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy, <laughs> several months. Happy all the things. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs>